as long as silver stays low. I know we don't like silver being low. It makes us feel bad. But that is the way to drain these stockpiles. And once they are drained, then the price can move up. This week, we are going to focus on the COMEX because there's a lot happening at that little place in New York. There's a lot of drainage going on. There's a lot of sucking. There's a lot of fall in the silver and gold supplies. And we have approaching another record month in gold drains. But first, I want to thank everyone who subscribed to my YouTube channel last week. And everyone who signed up to be my Patreon, not my Patreon, and everyone who became my Patreon on Patreon, where I give more of a religious biblical twist to everything that's going on here in the monetary sphere. And of course, all those who sign up for the Endgame Investor for a two-week free trial. Thank you so much. Let's keep going. We're at the end of this Endgame. I don't know how long it's going to take, but there's only one direction from here. It's the good one. Silver Report is brought to you by Fortuna Silver. Looking at their production and their estimated production for 2022, they produce about 25 times as much silver than gold. And I think the gold to silver ratio is something like 80 to 1. So it's primarily actually a gold play. And that wasn't true until last year when they acquired Rocks Gold. But now the miner gives you a good mix of gold and silver with gold stability and silver's price exposure. And their stock is right now hitting a 2018 low, excluding the 2020 March 2020 crash lows. This one looks especially well-priced. Just to review our own mentality, and mine included, we're all feeling down. We're all pessimistic. I understand. I am also emotionally pessimistic, though in my mind I understand that that emotion doesn't make any sense. And as this pessimism is sweeping over our community, the COMEX is being drained. And why is that? Because at prices this low, actors take advantage and they buy physical, which is exactly what is happening. So far, since Silver Squeeze, we have drained 100 million ounces from the registered category of silver on the COMEX, and August is approaching another record month for physical gold drains. July is just a bit ahead, but we have another week to overtake that for another record gold drain on the COMEX, and all the old-time gold and silver bugs are weary and tired and disappointed and enervated. Who is it that is buying these physical stocks? They are the newcomers. They are the reinforcements. Sort of like the Battle of the Bastards when Sansa comes and reinforces her brother at the very end of the battle. This is what we're experiencing now because it looks like the diehards are losing faith, but there are newcomers that are buying this supply because somebody is, which is why it is going down. This article appeared on Zero Hedge. It is originally from Quoth the Raven, who apparently likes Edgar Allan Poe a bit too much. Quoth the Raven. Nevermore. 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 But he's a good guy. On Zero Hedge, it gives this little chart here where it shows silver at 1.18 billion ounces and then June 2022 of 997 million. However, this chart is not current. It is outdated because Quoth the Raven didn't go into the primary sources. He just quoted Ronan Manley at Bullion Star, which I did last week. But here is the actual numbers. Here are the actual numbers to be grammatically correct. This is current to July, not 997, but 950 million ounces. We see here, this is a very strong silver drain from the LBMA in London. Gold is not moving as much. Why is that? Because a lot of that gold belongs to the Bank of England, which does not sell it. And a lot of it belongs to ETFs, which do not sell it. And true, a lot of the silver belongs to ETFs also in London, but a lot of it is free floating. So we have silver draining from the LBMA, but gold is draining from the COMEX at incredible record rates. And that's the next slide. We're going to zoom in on this in a second. What we have here is another drain of 1.5. 5.2 million ounces, sorry, 1.572 million ounces this month in August. And if you look in here closely, you can see that it's almost a record. We're going to zoom in in one second. On the next slide here, we have 14 million, 13.8 ah, million in registered stocks left. Next slide here. This is a record month, all time record. And you can see that from here. This black line that I drew, this little thin black horizontal line, and I showed this last week. This is a record down month, and this month is just about there. We're at 1.572 million ounces drained. So that is 3.6 million or so, 3.7, almost 4 million ounces drained in the last two months. 
Why is it being drained? Because price is too low and fiat currencies are dying. That is what is happening. And we got to get these stocks down if we're going to see a sustained moon up in futures and therefore in the spot price. And now what about silver? The registered stocks closed down about 2.5 million ounces on Thursday. If you're watching this, it's yesterday. We're at 52.02 million ounces. We were at something like 54 point something million the day before. Now, this huge downline, the trend, the slope has been pretty much consistent except for a tiny little blip up for a day or two here. But the trend has been from about 152 million ounces at the top here. And this was the exact date of silver squeeze. This is February 1st, 2021, when the world, in my opinion, changed, when the silver bullet was fired. We have 100 million ounces drained from the registered category here since then. And I put a little line here visually at 100 million. This is how much that has been drained from this red line to zero is how much silver has been drained since silver squeeze. And now we're at 52 million. We've drained about 70% of the total. And it's not that long before we get to record lows at this rate. It should be in a month or two. I don't know exactly the rate we're going to go, but as long as silver stays low, I know we don't like silver being low. It makes us feel bad. But that is the way to drain these stockpiles. And once they are drained, then the price can move up. So as much as we hate gold and silver spot price, paper price being down, but the spot price being down is what is going to drain this stockpile. So as much as it hurts, it is good in the medium to long term. And I'm not going to say long term because this is not going to last that much longer. We're headed down in these stockpiles and they're going to go to record lows, in my opinion, very soon. And now here are premiums. You see here percentage premium on junk silver. The reason I pick junk silver is because the supply is constant and is more trustworthy in terms of stackers who want to use these coins to buy emergency supplies in a currency collapse. Junk silver will be more recognizable than bullion from whatever company. And even though that will probably be very good, it might not be as good or as accepted as junk premiums, as, sorry, as junk silver, which should have a little bit of a higher premium in an emergency situation because it's recognized as US government minted. We're at 37.2% here. The only time this diagonal, sorry, this horizontal red line here, the only time premiums were ever higher on junk silver was at the peak of the 2008 current financial crisis when we hit 40%. They haven't gotten close to that until now. And I drew these little rectangles to give you some perspective here. Look, these were the previous peaks of premiums. They don't last long, which means this premium is going to last long either, which means the spot price is going to head up very soon. Hopefully not before the entire coal mix is drained, but you know, we'll see. And so I drew another horizontal line here at the current price. Every time there were peak premiums, we see here in 2020, March 2020, where premiums reached a peak of 35%. That is when silver like collapsed to about $11 on the spot price. The spot was lower than it is now. And here too, in 2016, the spot price was much lower than it is now. And here in 2013, the spot price was still lower than it is now. And here in 2018, it was much lower than it is now. This is the highest spot price for the current premium, which means that physical silver keeps heading higher despite what we see on the spot price and that is the place to be for the end game i know it's painful we want to see the spot price move and it will just hang on as for what is happening in the current delivery we have four days to delivery deliveries start at the end of the day on august 30th that's four trading days or three trading days from now if you're watching this on friday i'm making this on thursday so it's four we have 32,167 contracts still open in the september contract 10,403 contracts worth of registered supply are available with four days to delivery. Now, don't get too excited about the actual number of deliveries. That just means warrants are changing hands. It does not necessarily mean that those warrants are being liquidated, which is what we want to see, which is what happens when you have registered supply moving to eligible or registered to sell on the COMEX or on the futures market, moves to eligible storage for someone to use however he sees fit. And so as these warrants change hands in about four days, we are hoping to see a lot more of that registered supply come off and go into storage, which means it will not be put back for sale in a significant amount of time. Because otherwise, why would somebody liquidate a warrant if he intends to sell that warrant soon after? He liquidates it. People liquidate warrants and move silver from registered to eligible to keep it for a long time, maybe to sell it back as a futures much, much later. 
or maybe to use it for bullion markets or whatever industrial purposes. It is unclear because we do not know that information. And the final thing I wanted to get into here is real deflation. This means the quarterly average annualized money supply, the amount of dollars in the banking system. I'm not talking about consumer prices here. I'm talking about the actual money supply. It is falling at a rate, the fastest rate since, and I did this research all the way back to 1993, which was also a deflationary period. However, the internet was becoming more attractive and more famous or more used back then, which was really drastically lowering prices back then. That was when Amazon was founded and all this. Thing. So prices really started to get lower. So deflation didn't really impact the economy as much back then because productivity was skyrocketing. However, now we have the highest rate of deflation since 1993. And you see what happened here in 2008. And I've shown this before. When the money supply growth rate fell below zero in late 2008, which led to the crash, which led to QE1 and 2 here. And you see that big jump where my arrow is. And obviously, this is the COVID jump from about 7% growth to about 50% growth in two months, which was insane. And now we are below zero. We are about negative 2.62% quarterly average annualized. This is going to lead to some sort of equities crash in the next few months, exactly when I don't know. There is always a lag, but it's coming unless these data are completely fraudulent, which there is a small possibility, but I doubt it. And once the crash does occur, the Fed will likely pivot despite all of the gobbledygook nonsense that it is spouting today. It is scared. It is terrified and it has only one thing to do and that is print money and that's what it will do when the crunch comes and it is coming. So silverbacks, calm down. The reinforcements are coming. That's why these stockpiles are draining. It doesn't look like it in the spot price because there's still a lot of supply left in these big stockpiles, but they are getting smaller. Meanwhile, the next liquidity crunch, the next financial crisis is just ahead. Exactly how long, I don't know, but I see it in the monetary numbers. It is coming and the final pivot is coming. And that is when the dollar will, God willing, finally collapse.